Here we go. One, two, one, two, three. Welcome to the second episode of The Wizard and the Kid Elton John Album Review Show. This is Greg Synth Wizard. And this is the kid. I'm not going to say my YouTube name again. It's horrible. Oh, oh uh, because it's too long. Yeah, it's too long. And in this episode, we'll review the Elton John album. That's right. The Elton John album. Uh, sometimes uh, mistaken as Elton's debut album. That is half true because it's the first album in the United States until, you know, because Empty Sky wasn't released till 1975 because we couldn't handle Empty Sky when it was first released in 69. But, um, oh, yeah. But, you know, we're going to review uh, the self-titled album, and uh, what do I think of this album? Stay tuned in just a few moments. Alright, now it is time to review Elton John's self-titled album, entitled Elton John, which that didn't make sense, but you know what, we're going to keep that in the video because we're all about improv and not following the script because that sucks. So here we go, we're going to review this album right here, and like I said, what do I think of this album? Well, in my opinion, it blows Empty Sky out of the water. This is a classic Elton John album, recommended for anybody who is even remotely interested in the man. I love this album a lot. Now, how about you? I think it's a great album, though um, when somebody started out, I probably wouldn't wouldn't recommend them to this album because it's completely different from the album that he's going to make next. So, um, well, I still think it's a great album, so let's go it by, by song by song. Well, you know what? You know what? We're gonna we're gonna do that, and thank you for giving me that idea because I was gonna get lost. So what we're gonna do is, um, and before we do that, <laughs> before we do that real quick, I like to I like to make note on there's a few different versions of the album out there. There's the original from 1970, which has ten tracks. There are a couple remaster reissues from the mid 90s on Mercury and and Rocket Records, which has the bonus tracks of a Gray Seal. A Grey Seal version from 1970, Rock and Roll Madonna, and uh, The Bad Side of the Moon. And, um, and a completely different order than he just said, but never mind. Yeah, you know, I was just naming the tracks, whatever. And also, there's a 2008 version which has the bonus tracks on there, some BBC versions, and all the demos for all the studio tracks. But And for this review, we're going to review the reissues from the mid-90s, because it has all of the all of the you know the studio tracks and the bonus tracks and we'll do like probably the other stuff on like another season where it's like the unofficial or bbc or you know demo Demi. stuff yeah we'll do that but we're going to focus strictly on the official studio stuff here so since i started first on the last review would you like to begin the review yes well, well you know what start okay so we start off with your song well, what do I think of that? It's a classic. The, I, I don't think there is any Elton John fan out there who's, who, who will say, I don't like your song. No, it starts off really bad, this album. It's just a classic hit. The arrangement's perfect. Elton's vocals are perfect. The piano's perfect. Everything is perfect. Five out of five stars. No discussion. You start the next song. Oh, wait, what the hell? No discussion? What about me? I wanted to say some stuff. Okay, yep. yes, yes, Elton John, this this album starts off with the classic Your Song, I, like you said, excellent song, you know, this was Elton's first big hit over here in the United States, was top, reached uh, top 10, I think it was number 7, don't quote me on that, but, um, but it was top 10 over here, and uh, like you said, classic, I, I, I do rank this 5 out of 5, but... I will say that there are better songs on the album than 
your song. But I still give this 5 out of 5 because it's classic. Nothing wrong with it. Anyone who says that's a bad song is on more drugs than Elton ever was. Totally agreed. Okay. So it, oh, there we go. We're starting off well. <laughs> nice, short, and simple. Yes. So, your turn. <laughs> okay. We have the second song called I Need You to Turn To. And uh, on this, on this, um, on this, we have uh, we have that good old, uh, you know, I think, believe it's that harpsichord is back. But however, yep. however, on this song, I'm not bothered by it. I, it fits very, very well because, it, you know, the production. Uh, by the way, uh, Gus, this is uh, the first album with uh, Gus Dudgeon producing, a fantastic producer. You know, it, th this guy knows his stuff. Um, you know, I, I like the approach on the song. It's a little bit minimalistic on, like, the instruments. Like, it's not overproduced. It, all the instruments breathe, you know, for lack of a better word. The vocal is very good. Um, and, you know, you can't forget, you know, Puck, uh, uh, Ball, uh, Paul uh, Buckmaster's arrangements on here because, uh, you know, he does a lot of orchestral arrangements on these. And all, all the songs... Trans, uh, translated very well to the live stage, especially, you know, on that 86 orchestra show in Melbourne, and, uh, you know, it's a, it's a very, it's a very, very good song, uh, nothing bad about it, and, uh, you know, four out of five, or five, it's, I rank it high. Yeah, same over here, really like the song, uh, Buckmaster's arrangements are great, uh, Though I have to agree, I probably like the 86 version better than this one, but still, it's a great version. I'd probably give it four and a half out of five. Yeah. So now I need you to turn to number three. All right, um, and I believe you start that song off. Oh, okay. So it's Take Me to the Pilot. Uh, great song, though I believe there's no one out there who has any fucking clue what it's about. Still, amazing song, really love it. Though I'd probably say the live versions are a lot better. Still, great song, four and a half out of five, probably. Yep, um, yep, you pretty much nailed it on the head there. Um, again, you know, this album is starting off really well. I mean, so far, we're, what, three songs in, and we're giving these songs pretty high rankings. Um, for, for Take Me to the Pilot, yep, it's a, it's a very, it's a very kind of like an up-tempo gospel number, and those, and you gotta love the backing vocals. Very gospel-influenced. Um, you know, I love the studio version for its, you know, uh, kind of like a raw sound, but I also love the live versions, because you know me as an Elton John fan that I will take live performances pretty much over studio, but, you know, it doesn't dampen the, you know, my pleasure of listening to the studio stuff, because they're both good in their own right. Um, I will, you know, I will give, I'll give it, you know, four and a half out of five, it's, and I would give a five to, like, you know, the live versions, but, um, you know, I like it, and, um, and, you know, nothing really much more to say about it. Yep. Next song. Okay, we, uh, we now we're going into kind of a different direction on this album. I will be doing the song called No Shoestrings on Louise. I had to look over on the cheat sheet because sometimes I mess the name up. Um, unlike, hey, it's okay. Um, but what, it, what that is, what this is, is the first couple songs were either gospel influenced or very you know like piano ballad kind of a stuff this one is a different sound this is kind of like country western honky tonk with kind of like a little bit of a rolling stones kind of an edge to it like especially where uh because when when elton delivers the song i i think of mick jagger because some like some of the phrasing in this tone is kind of reminiscent of of mick of early rolling stones and um the song did grow on me. I do like this song, but not as much as the previous three songs. And um, you know, and you know, and Caleb Quay plays his ass off on on this song. In fact, he's all over this album. And uh, you know, and then pretty soon later on, you know, when we get into the bonus tracks, uh, some other Elton members that we gladly talk great things about also appear on those songs. 
But um, for no for no shoestrings on Louise, um, I would give it um, I'd give it about a 3.5. It's it's pretty good. I don't hate it. I don't love it, but I don't skip it. You know, it's one of those songs where you know I, I like it, but not as much as the others. Yeah, same over here. It's, I think it's a great song. Love it. Though it's not, it, it doesn't live up to the, the expect expectations raised by the first three songs. Uh, still, nothing bad to say about it. You know, we have an awful lot of agreeing to do on this album. I, that's that's not good for our viewer ratings. Oh so, no, no wait, no. When we get to some later albums, I think we'll be at each other's throats. But um, but you know what? But hey, but we're talking about a classic album here, so you know what? I, I don't think there'll be too many deviations, but if there is, then oh oh well, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> um, and it's also three out of five stars, probably. Yeah. Yeah, it's a, yeah, it's it's you know it's pretty good, not as good as the because yeah, you know if you start off the album with three excellent songs, you know there's got to be a, a a line drawn, you know. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I believe it's your turn. Um, first episode at Hyenton. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. Um, I think so. I think it's a good. De it's a decent song. I I I can't say I like it. I think it's one of the weaker songs on the album. However, it's still pretty enjoyable, and it's it's not a horrible song. It's just n not as good as the others. So I'd probably give it like two, two and a half out of five stars. Ooh, Your ooh a little. That's, that's, oh, the first, the first song that you give a two or something to. Oh, oh, I'm gonna go cry now. Um, <laughs> um, about this, about this song. Um, first episode at, at I think it's Hinton or Hinton. Uh, whatever. I'll look it up probably after this, and we'll see who gets it right. Um, I, you know, it's, you know. I, I do like I do like I, I know I know it's it? it's it's Hyenton. Hyenton. Okay, there we yeah. go. Elton, Elton actually sings it in his song, so. Okay, so there we go. Uh, first episode of Hyenton. There we go. We fixed it right on the fly without having someone correct it for us, and I'll look like an idiot. Well, I already have, but you know it's okay. But um, for this for this song for this song, it's a very um, how should I put this? It's a very melancholy kind of a song, and um. It's, you know, I like to describe it as dark, melancholy, a bit depressing, mysterious, um, but you know what? I, you know, I like the melody here, because on on the previous album, Empty Sky, when there was a lot of the slower stuff, you know, it had a lot of, those songs had some potential, but, you know, the melody wasn't completely there, and it was kind of drifting, but here, there's a, like, a, there's a, there's a melody you can follow, and, you know... I, I like it not as much as the others, but you know, I, I you know, I like the song. I I would give it, I I rank it a little higher than uh, No Shoestrings, but less than the others. So, so um, I would say probably about bordering a four, like a like a three point seven five, like three point five, like somewhere in that region. Not as it's better than the other than no shoestrings, but not as good as the first three. That's what, that's what I think. Well, uh, I think shoestrings is a lot better. But anyways, it's your turn. It is my turn. All right, we have well, this classic song that opened up some uh, Elton John shows on the '79 tour and uh, the Red Strikes Back tour and the orchestra section on the Australia '86 shows. Sixty years on. Uh the concert. Yes, thank you for for adding that as well. Um, sixty years on. Um, I gotta say, but before before I talk about this song, it's a relief to listen to this after some of the Reg versions. Oh my God. Um, but um, but yeah, because you know here Elton, you know we don't we don't got the growling or the bad stuff. We got some nice soft, you know, youthful vocals, and uh, you know I really I really like the. Uh, I really, I really like it on on the album. It's it's very very nice, pleasant song. Um, you know, can't say anything bad about it. You know, Paul Buckmaster's magic comes through again, and and uh, 
you know, I like the I like you know the the guitar on that on that song, the Spanish guitar. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I would rank I would rank this I rank this song pretty high. I'd give it around a four and a half. Well, um, I I have to say two things. Firstly, I think the song is absolutely great. I, I love some of the versions. I love the '86 version. I love the birthday concert version. However, I think this would be a song that would have been much better if it had been on one of his later albums. When I hear somebody talking about 60 years on, and then it's this guy from 22 who's singing it, it, it doesn't feel right. And I have to admit, the first version I heard of this song is actually the 86 version, uh, and I totally fell in love with that version, and so this version is good it's it's definitely good don't get me wrong on that it's just not as good as it could have been i i would probably give it three and a half out of five something like that i'd, I'd give I'd, I'd give uh because because the, the first version i heard of this of that song wasn't was in the studio i don't think it was the uh the orchestra one uh the first more version i heard was either uh, a later version from from the 21st century, I think it might have been the birthday show or one of the Reg versions. I heard. I can't remember which one it was, but yeah, that's a wonderful way to start off the song. Um, but um, and I gotta say, I do agree that um, you know, I think you know, for what it what it's worth on the album, I like it. But you know, I think he does sing it better later on, especially you know, on say. You know that his '93 tour with Ray Cooper has some fantastic-sounding versions. You know because he just nails that song like "No Tomorrow." You know because that's one of the advantages of later Elton. I mean, like people like to talk about, say, "Oh, he lost his range. He can't." Well, well, well you know, you lose something, but you gain something. You gain more, like you gain more wisdom. You gain more soul. You, you know, you gain more. You. You, you gain lower range, you gain, you know, a richer sound, so, you know, I, I, I rank, you know, later versions higher than earlier versions, you know, but, you know, the one on the album's good. Yeah, okay. So, Border Song, it's my turn, isn't it? Uh, yes, I, it is. I don't know. Border <laughs> Song, I, I really like this song, I, th I think it's one of my favorites, though, the last... Uh, like the last few lines from the uh, last verse are a bit odd, but I think Elton admitted to to writing those, so that that accounts for something. Um, yeah, I really like the song. I'd probably give it four and a half or five out of five, something like that. Great song. Yep. Um, yeah, I I like I like Border Song. Um, I do think that. The song sounds better with an aged Elton, or an old Elton, I should say, like when he sings it, um, because when he does, when he when he when he does slower songs, or songs with like, you know, lower mid range with sustains, I think his uh, his richer, older voice suits those songs a lot better. But um, but for this song, um, I do like it. Um, Elton did in fact write the uh, the lyrics to the last verse. That 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 yep. And um, I, I I do like the song. I I give it you know, four or four and a half out of five. Um, if you if you want to know versions that I I really do like um, and would listen to a lot, um, I do like I do like the Rainbow version. But I like to listen to ones the solo tour of uh, the '99 solo tour. Okay, so next song. <laughs> All right, we'll start in this one, me. <laughs> yeah, it's your turn. All right, uh, yeah. the, the great, the greatest discovery. One of the one of the songs that were featured on the Melbourne Symphony Orchestra show of uh, 1986. Uh, great song, translated very well to the stage. You know, and you, uh, once again, you can thank Paul Buckmaster. He he's the man on this album. You know, his his arrangements, his orchestral arrangements, really make this album what it is. Because if we didn't have him on this album. I think we would still talk about the album pretty positively, but I don't think the songs would have been as good without the combination of us and uh, Paul. But um, I do like 
The Greatest Discovery. It, it's a fantastic song. I do prefer the live version uh, on a, on a instrumental you know basis over the studio, but the one on the studio version is the one on the studio. The studio version is is great, and I I give it four out of five, or sorry, four and a half out of five. Uh, I have to agree with you on that. I think the the orchestra version is is better, though. Uh, I I absolutely adore this song. I think it's one of my all time favorites of Elton, just because the story is so beautiful and the melody is is amazing and how it all builds to this uh, this lyric. Uh, this is your brand new brother. It's just perfect and. I, I'm there, I think both the studio version and the live version are, are perfect, so I give them both a 5 out of 5, totally. I, what, what I really like about the studio version is that at the end of the song, the, the little fade in and fade out again at the end. Yeah, it's like... It's I like... Think that gives a slight touch to this whole thing. Yeah, it's like, it's like, you know, it's like, you know, the song does a premature fade out, then you kind of hear it really faintly, and Elton's vocals very faintly in the mix, and they like come right back up into the mix. You know, it's a that's a that's a really good effect that Gus did, and uh, I, I you know I, I like it. Nothing much more to say. No. So then we're up for the cage, which I think is the worst song on the album, not including the bonus tracks. I I, I just this song never did anything for me. Uh, just no, it it, it 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 just felt like the elephant's foot. Don't do that. What 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 my what, what, what I was stre- I was stretching my tongue out. Sorry. You know when yeah, you listen when you listen to, when you listen to Kiss and watch Gene Simmons, sometimes your tongue hurts. Go ahead. Uh, it's just this this song never did anything to me. It's it's like the elephant's foot on the album. It's no, probably. Two out of five, something like that. Maybe even less. Boo. Um. <laughs> wow. Uh, I think we'll be at each other's throat on this one because I actually really like this song. Probably because um, yeah, make all the faces you want. Um, because I th- I think it's because I have I've always liked um, funk music and you know syncopated rhythms and and stuff and. Uh, and, and the song has this very, like, up-tempo, like, bluesy piano introduction, and it goes into these... I, and I think the song would have kicked ass on the 85, 86 tour, you know, with the with the big... the band and everything, and, you know, doing an extended solo section with, you know, Davey play, playing, then have David Payton, you know, thumping the bass, and having the brass section do solos, like, an extended... So I think... I, I think... I, I Why didn't they play that live? But, you know... It would have been a great live number. They could have built on the uh, because the song is only like in three and a half minutes, so they could have like you know. I think I know why they didn't play it live. Why? Screw you. That's why. Oh so. yeah, no no yeah they played it they that's didn't play it live awesome. because they knew I was gonna talk about it in a positive way. Um, Definitely. So oh, you're but, <laughs> but uh, come on, it's like. You know, you know, it's like this is the one song that we're at total opposite ends of the spectrum here. You don't like this song, but I love this song. It's one of my favorites on the album because it, probably because I like the, you know, uh, hello mom, and um, gosh, making another cameo appearance. Hi. Um, no, you were right there in the corner of the video. I saw you. <laughs> um, yeah, she'll be back. Yeah, right, great. I'm not paying the salary. Okay. Um, <laughs> so. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I do like The Cage, because it's very, you know, it's very up-tempo. It's got, I think, Elton's best vocal performance on the uh, on the album, because it has him doing different, it has him doing the two different tones of head voice on this on this album. He does his falsettos, and yeah, yeah, I, I know, I know it, I, I know the gears are clicking in your head, and it's hard to, you know, comprehend all this ridiculous nonsense, but... He does exactly nonsense. So it's, let's skip all the. Oh, oh no! Oh no! You know you're gonna let me finish on this one, uh, because I, because I've, because I've been, I love that song, and I'm gonna defend it to the grave. Um, but then again, you'll probably defend a song that I don't, that I don't like. So it's gonna go both ways. It has, 
El Elton doing falsetto and doing full voice um, towards the end. So he, he kind of is showing off his different, you know, techniques to the vocal and, you know, he sings it very well. And, you know, before you go to sleep, uh, I like to I like to end that it's one of my favorites. So there you go. Well, screw you. So the last song on the album is The King Must Die and It's Your Turn. <laughs> Thank you. It, this is another classic song that I also will give give a very, very high ranking to. I like this song a lot. And uh, and like I said for uh, 60 Years On, it's a relief listening to the studio version over some of the Reg versions I had to listen to recently. Um, this is a 5 out of 5. This is a 5 out of 5 song for me. Although I do think that there are live versions that trump the studio, like uh, the ones he did with uh, with with D and, and Nigel in on the '71 tour, and uh, and the 2000 and the 2000 orchestra stuff is really good. And the Sydney one is also good. I mean, yeah, he's rough, but I don't care. You know, he makes it work with what he has, and the orchestra suits it very well. And I love The King Must Die. It's one of my favorites on the album. Five out of five for me. Well, it's it's a great song. No debate about that. Definitely a great song. I think the 86 version is the best version out there. It's, uh, it's, it's as you say, rough, but right. Uh, I, I think the, the song kind of ha also has this roughness to it, so its rough vocals actually suit the song very well. And of course, the orchestra is beautiful. Uh, for anybody who doesn't know it, I'm a complete sucker for an audience, oh, for an orchestra. I love it when there's a, this symphony orchestra playing in the back. But um, and the studio version, I think it's it's one of the lesser versions. Of course, I haven't listened to the Reg version, so you don't I, want I, I to. <laughs> no. no. <laughs> It probably it pro they probably should have uh, named it the king wants to die, but uh, the, the voice must die, <laughs> or, or the, the king must oh, growl. The, the, uh, the voice is dead, more like. Uh, <laughs> yeah, that that, that, that was, that's the Kyoga Falls version. <laughs> but uh, I I honestly think that the studio version is one of the lesser versions out there. I I I'd probably the the song on itself I'd probably give a five out of five definitely, but. The studio version, I'd probably stick to a 4 out of 5. Still, it's a great version, it's a great song, it's just what, not the best version out there. I think uh, live versions are much, much better. I can I can agree on, on that for the most part, it just depends on what live versions you want to listen to. Um, yeah, like yeah. The, 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 the orchestra one you were mentioning, is one of the best is one of the best and i got nothing against that one so that that does that probably does beat the that that beats almost all the red versions it's like it's like sad I'm, I'm sitting here saying i would rather take a version with the orchestra with the rough voice with the nodules over the growling of the next tour so but actually no because he, he makes it work so yeah uh, i think we got the king must die done yeah so that was the original album. That's right. And normally, if we didn't have the reissues, we would have stopped. But we have more songs. Woo! -hoo. Woo -hoo. Yes. <clears throat> Sorry. <laughs> uh, don't imitate a bird. Um, stop watching those animal cracker videos. <laughs> yeah, sure. I'm not gonna do that. So <laughs> the next song, "Bad Side of the Moon." I think this is a really good one. I I probably would have wrote preferred Bad Side of the Moon over the cage on the album. You're, I know you're gonna hate me for saying this, but I'm gonna say it anyway. Screw you. Again. No, you, you, hey, come here! Oh, okay. You, you go, know what? Go. Every, 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 every time your mom's gonna walk behind you on the screen, I'm just gonna scream, Cameo! Okay? So <laughs> you do do that. <laughs> but I, I think personally uh, the studio version over the live versions that I've heard uh, so that's from the live albums h here and there and, and 1711 70 or how you want to call it cameo okay <laughs> wow god uh, <laughs> we're all conspiring against you now fuck this um, <laughs> go ahead continue I'm sorry but I think that the live versions are better than the 
studio version. I love the studio version too, but I think the live versions are just way better. Probably give it a, a 4 out of 5, 4 and a half out of 5, something like that. Your turn. Yeah, it's my turn. Um, yeah, and I turned the right way this time. There. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, so here we, so here we, so here we go. Um, you know, you pretty much hit the nail on the head. I rank this, I like the song. Um, I would gladly, I wouldn't replace the cage though, and I'm sorry if that hurts you, but, um, I would, um, I would take out, if it were up to me, I would take out either No Shoestrings, I would take probably No Shoestrings or First Episode, and switch it out with, with that, with, with yeah. one of those, and then, you know, there we go. And I, I give it, I give it, I, I give it a four out of five. I, it's a good song, and yeah. and and what and what I and what I like most about the song are the choruses and the backing vocals. I, I, I think that's what makes the song that that chorus. Definitely, definitely. And uh, you know, it's there's not really much to say about it, you know. Yeah. So, Gracie, your turn. My Maybe. turn. And. Uh, and so, and Grey Seal. Um, okay, you know this is this is the first version of the song because the, the most common version is the band version. You know, from uh, the Goodbye Elbrick Road album. Um, this one I do like, but I prefer the one from '73 more, and the live versions most definitely from '97. Um, o- over this one, it's it's good for what it is. Uh, but I think that this is a good candidate for a bonus track. I wouldn't have put it on the main album, but it, it's a pleasant listen. It's it is what it is. It's good, but not my favorite version of the song. I think it works a lot better on either live or the '73 Goodbye Elbrick Road studio version. So I would give. I love the song. I, that's a five out of five song for me. I will. I listen to that song all the time. This version, I'd give a three out of five, but. It's, but I will listen to it. But the song itself is five out of five. Okay, so I have to agree with you. Goodbye, Eric wrote a version beats this one out of the park. Uh, I must say I don't think this version works at all. I think it's clumsy. It it do, it just doesn't sound right to me. So that's why I probably give it like it, it's listenable, but I I don't really enjoy it. This version. Again, songs perfect. The Goodbye Break Road version is amazing, and I I love it. But this version just doesn't work in any way, shape, or form. So uh, definitely bonus track material, and I'd probably give it a three out of five, two and a half out of five, something like that. Yep. Yeah, and also it's kind of interesting to hear the song played on like 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 electric piano and stuff. Cause I'm so used to hearing a piano play, but. Yeah. You know, it's it's interesting, but you know, I definitely prefer other versions of the song. Yeah. Over, it over this. sounds like a demo. Yeah, it's like a it's like a rough, like kind of like a rough alternative demo or something of the song, and 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 mm. I and I think and I think Elton sounds better on the song with age. Yeah. That, that's why I made the '97 comment because his uh that that his voice on the Big Picture tour like pones the shit out of the song, so you know. <laughs> I'm 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 sitting here talking about the Elton John album, and I'm like mentioning stuff from the '90s sounding bad. <laughs> What's wrong with me? Um, but okay, um, th- th- we got Grace Seal out of the way, right? Yeah, rock and roll Madonna. Rock and roll Madonna. Um, who starts that with me? Yeah. All right. Uh rock and roll Madonna. Now, this is interesting because this is the first song Elton has done. Where um, they added that uh, that canned audience into it, like like Benny, the studio version of Benny and the Jets, to yeah. kind of like probably to simulate a live concert environment, kind of a deal. Because you know, Rock and Roll Madonna is a nice up tempo rocker. I like it, and mm-hmm. uh, um, I would, you know, I'm on the fence about putting it on the uh, on the uh, the main album because I think it's a good song but you know there's like all these other great songs on the album so uh, you know I, you know what hold on I will I will cheat and I'll sneak it in the album somewhere oh you know? but um I, I, I like it and um, and as a side note um, uh, Roger Pope plays the drums on this one hmm 
interesting side note. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Uh, well, you talk about the song. Uh, well, uh, as you say, first appearance of the kind audience. Uh, probably if I'd heard this song before Benny and the Jets, and you told me that they were going to use the kind audience again, I'd probably say, no, don't do it, it doesn't work. Uh, in this song, I, I, when I first heard Benny and the Jets, I went like, did they record this song live? And I really wondered about that. But I, when I, I thought so too. But when I listened to this song, I just went like, yeah, they just faded that audience in and out. It's it's just so painfully clear. And it's, it's sort of tears the song apart for me, because every time they start grooving, and I, I think from, yeah, this song's, I think like this song is going to work, and then they peer in the stupid audience and I'm like no no that's so obviously put in there no no so that it kind of ruins the song for me and it's I'd probably give it three out of five I wouldn't put it on the album in years I you... think the material on the album is much better than this so that's it I guess all right and uh, and I'll and I, I forgot to do this during the main part of the of the review but um but if you want, if you want to know who plays on what, um, obviously Elton John is is the piano man and does the singing. Oh no! Oh, I didn't, you know, I didn't, I didn't, I really didn't know that. Oh, my gosh. Until, oh, yeah. oh such I didn't know. Surprise! No, but um, also this is the first Elton album with synthesizers on it. There are some synth synths used. Um, uh, the cage, the cage has some synths used, I believe. I believe there were either ARP 25 or 2600s, or I think were used. And I know for a fact that on um, on High Anton, uh, let's see, an organ on Border Song, and a Moog synthesizer on the Cage, and that's it. Yeah, I yeah I was I was I knew there was synths on, on that. I was trying to figure out which one it was because I I know I know first episode had a had a Moog on it, but I wasn't sure on the cage. But now that they got it written right there, thanks. Um, <laughs> and 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 I like and I like the keyboards on there. I, you know, they're they're not out of place. They're not like randomly spliced in there like some other albums, and it fits the song very well. Yeah, they they sound very natural, and I think that's what synths yeah, should do. Yeah, I mean, you, you can't you can't beat a Moog synth at all. And uh, and uh, on on most on most of these songs that we debated, um, well, not debate, reviewed, whatever. Uh, Caleb Quay is the guitarist again and plays his ass off on this album. And uh, and then we, and then you know he's sometimes joined by uh, by uh, by Frank Clark um, and and Clive Hicks. Um, dr drums. You have uh, you have you have Barry Morgan, who is not related to Charlie Morgan. Um, Even though you thought so. Well, whatever. I, I made a mistake. Sorry. <laughs> um, and and uh, you know. What? You know what? You know what, Greg? I'd probably say you failed this test. What? You know why? You're so obviously I'm not cheating. cheating. I'm I'm referencing it because because I was yeah. see I, I I'm telling people I didn't want to mess the names up. Yeah, but you're, but you're every time you're going like oh, oh. well you know I can't I can't read from up here I got to look down there. Place the the sheets on your keyboard so you just have to look I, I down. I can't because it looks too obvious. Um. But um, I do yeah, that. Well, well, good for you. I don't. Um, <laughs> the, the, you know what you're saying? Putting it on the keyboard and looking down is mm -hmm. too obvious. How much more obvious can you get than actually just looking away? No, I was stretching I, I my think... neck and my back. Okay, shut up. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> what are you? <laughs> You can clearly see that on the videos. I was stretching my neck and back like that. I wasn't looking over. Yeah. And you always have some convenient pain piece of information ready when yeah, you Yeah, because do. it's up in my oh, head. Surprising. Because it's up in my head. <laughs> what? I, I knew what I was going to say. I was just looking down like that to, you know, make sure my neck and my back weren't aching when I tried to talk, okay? 
Y you can believe yeah, what you sure. want to believe. I'm just telling you what it is. Yeah, let's let's see what Adam has to say about this. Oh, okay? you know, you're not gonna drag him in this again. Hey, Adam, if you're if you're gonna if you're watching this till the end, I love the Royal Gala. There. Oh, you just got burned, Adam. Again, third degree burn. <laughs> um, there we go. Yeah, please, please apply some cold water to the burn. Or, or listen to another version <laughs> of the song. Um, so, <laughs> um, so so here we go. Uh, I think I think we I think we I think we got through this pretty well, in spite of me fumbling a few times throughout the whole thing. Yeah. It took us two takes to do the introdu three takes to do the introduction, guys. You will, you'll probably see a gag reel in the end, and it's all because he got the name wrong. So no worries. It's, it's okay. And, I'll, and also, one last piece of useless important information: uh, "Border Song." It was Elton's first charting uh, single. Um, it didn't do too hot, but you know, it, uh, it, it, char it charted anyway. It reached. Uh, it, yeah, I got. A piece of paper here you know what you know where it chart you know where it charted no it ch tell not me i'm so interested okay it charted at 92 on the billboard hot 100 or the pop charts all right so now i have a piece and useless information for you did you know that they actually included border song on the a dutch version of the Rocket Man, the Definitive Hits compilation album. Oh well, I don't have the Dutch version, so there we go. There's something I didn't know. Neither do I. Well, neither do I. But I saw it in the oh, store. Oh well, so. well, good for you, because I didn't see it in any of the stores I went to. I like all I saw was the normal. I either saw the 2008 uh, reversion or the one from Rocket Records. Well, surprise. Yeah. So, so here we, so here, so here we go. Um. That, that about sums up our review of the Elton John self-titled, as you can tell. Um, very, you know, we like this album. I, I personally love it. You know, some a lot of great stuff. It kicks ass. It kicks the shit out of Empty Sky. <laughs> um, Definitely. Uh, and, uh, you know, I like like I said, it, it's it's one of those Elton albums that you got to take a look, listen to. You know, I like it. Yeah definitely need to listen to but don't try it as a first oh come on i wouldn't i would include it in there I, there's a lot of great material on there D and i'd i'd probably say try a greatest hits album so you have a bit of taste throughout the, the years of album before you just plunge yourself in the 70s and go like oh i really like these or uh, orchestra tracks and then you go to leather jackets and go like oh my god what happened, what happened? the orchestra the orchestras got replaced for synthesizers and drugs that's what happened um but you yeah. know leather jack comparing leather jack to the uh, elton john self-titled is uh woohoo ha ah, that's a little different it's like it's like it's like yeah. comparing it's like comparing the differences between Michael Jackson in 1980 and 1990 in terms of his skin color, you know. <laughs> yeah, but it's 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 kind of the same, you know. Yeah. So I I don't think it's no, a bad comparison. No, no, yeah, leather jackets. Uh, you know, my favorite all-time Elton album. Everything kicks ass on that one. <laughs> yeah, sure. We'll see about that when <laughs> we get to that <laughs> when album. We, when we do that review, that's gonna be a fun one. <laughs> Okay, so here we go. Uh, thank you for putting up with our nonsense for 40 minutes. At least it's shorter than the other video. Um, yep, so uh, win. There. You yes, I win. won this one, definitely. Oh. We'll uh, see you about know, that. Fine. You know what? We're, we're actually going to do this. You guys watching this video, comment below. Who I, won won this. I won this. I won this. You know who to who to vote for and if you vote for the right person I'll upload some rare Elton shows I just got there you go <laughs> vote for me no, that, that's, that's blackmail. not that's you not blackmail no that is not blackmail because I'm not threatening you with anything I'm just gonna reward people who vote for the right person yeah sure that's called blackmail no it's not <laughs> it's called being creative and um and smart yeah, sure. Okay, fine. No, no, you know what, guys? If you vote for me, I'm gonna make Greg listen to some more uh, 88, 89 gigs, and I'll upload the results. 
of him screaming and yelling and cursing. I told you, I told so you they, not to release that bootleg. I told you thousands of times not to put that out there. I warn you. <laughs> well, shame on you. You started this. I didn't start this. this. I wanted to review an Elton John album. You're one making fun of me. No. Oh no. You're, no. Oh no. Yeah, I'll tell you what. When we when we review uh, whatever the next album is, the Tumbleweed Connection, I'm gonna show you that I won this one. You're you're gonna show me that you yes. won this one. So the Elton yes. John. Yeah. We'll uh, see. Yeah. We'll see. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Go away. <laughs> I go away. Fine. I'll go okay, away. Okay. Fine. Bye. Uh, oh, wait. Wait. Hold on. I'm. Uh, wait. I can't get up. My back hurts. Um. All right, he rage quitted, which means I won this one. So here we go. Oh, no, you oh, didn't. didn't. <laughs> Screw you. I'm out. Oh, hey. You close off this review. I'm not rage quitting. I'm just walking out on him. Uh, that, okay? That's rage quitting. Well, 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 sit back down so we can end it with two people in the split screen. Okay. Bye bye, everybody. Screw. Screw you, Greg. Really, say that again. Screw you, Thank Greg. Thank you. Adios. Don't make face. <laughs> All right. <clears throat> Good thing that's not going on. Um, okay. Okay. Welcome to the second annual. Yeah. Well, that I messed that intro up. It's annual. It's not annual. It's weekly. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. I, okay. We'll get the bugs out. Okay. There we go. Try again. Try again. Take two. <laughs> Take two. Fuck that. <laughs> All right, here we go. I knew it. Seriously. All right, this is the worst intro. Okay. We'll put this as a blooper section. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Right. I'm just testing something quick. Okay. Okay. Welcome to the second episode of The Wizard and the Kid. Kid, I, I fucked that up too. <laughs> God damn it! Wait, hold on, hold on. I know what's wrong. I know what's wrong. Hold on. I need. I need some of this real quick. That's how Alton started out, you know. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know. Well, you know what? After I'm done with this, I'm gonna do my 25-minute version of Rocket Man. Okay. Oh, yes. Okay. We're okay. We're ready now. So hold the pose. <laughs>